Hello and welcome back to White Lines Football. Lewis again here today, back for another video in the Gillingham 2018 to 2019 season. And today, as you can tell, we start the video in the ground. Obviously, here's a bit of a later one. I just got to the ground for our start inside, so away we go. Today we're facing Fleetwood Town, managed by Joey Barton. So being in the ground, it is about 20 past two, so we do have some team news. It is a completely unchanged 18 from last week. So that is a diamond, Thomas Holy in goal, back four, Luke O'Neill, Max Aymer, Gabby Zakwani, Barry Fuller, Darren Old Aikens at the bottom of the diamond. That's great to see, he impressed last week on his return to first team action with Mark Byrne and Billy Bingham either side. Regan Charles Cook plays behind Tom Eaves and Brandon Hanlon. And there is the bench of Tom Hadler, Alex Lacey, Connor Ogilvy, Navid Nasseri, Dean Parrott, Elliot List and Nolan Bow, which means obviously the players that were sent home, so to speak, still aren't involved. Some news on that, obviously we know two, really, we can confirm from the squad last week. Josh Parker, he's returned to training. Lovell said he might have been in the squad today. He looks fit and raring to go, so hopefully that's good news for us. Hopefully we'll see the Josh Parker we had when he first came in on that short-term deal before he him lazy after we've got his longer deal, so to speak. Hopefully see a bit more of that, but he's not to be today. Nolan Bow keeps his place on the bench. Connor Wilkinson as well, he has gone out on loan to Dagenham Redbridge, been managed by Peter Taylor in the National League. Ryan Huck as well, I doubt he was sent home, but he's gone loan to Dover. An interesting story regarding Connor Wilkinson, he obviously, Gillingham, put it on the socials that he'd left, and um, a kid that was in year 10 actually, I can't remember his name, commented saying, um, oh, not sorry to see the back of him, I think that's an opinion a lot of Gillingham fans share. I for one am very, very happy he's not here anymore. Um, I hope that is the last we see of him in a Gillingham shirt. But Conor Wilkinson seemed to reply a sarcastic comment of, oh no, I'm gutted now, you said that and whatever. I sort of said to him, listen, why are you doing to his level? This is your problem. You've got attitude problems. And Wilkinson sort of replied to me and said, don't believe everything you see or read in regards to me mentioning this is why his career hasn't progressed. This is why he's been sent out on loan. This is why he's been sent home. You know, is he just playing mind games? Is he trying to defend himself? I don't know. He did delete the comment and I've not heard from him since. So. Whatever, you know, he's still under contract to Gillingham. He's just down on loan to January, so he might bang him in for Dagenham and come back. But as far as I'm concerned, that's the end of Conor Wilkinson at Gillingham for me, and I really, really hope it is. But focusing on today, Field are a good side. They've lost their last two away games, but those are against Portsmouth and Peterborough, so it might be not too much to read into. But they are a good side. They kind of sit 10th in the league. Joey Barton's gone playing well, you know, a young manager. Um, he's just come out of a professional game as a player. Um, going down the league, to so start his managerial stint as well. Fair play to Fleetwood fans that made the massive massive trip. We will be repaying our respects um, for kickoff today, firstly towards the Leicester, um, the Leicester helicopter disaster and we will also be um, paying our respects ahead of Remembrance Day so hopefully that will be all carried out very very well and hopefully we win a good game of football today. We'll see how it goes, we're here at Priestfield, heading towards 3pm where we have Gillingham versus Fleetwood Town, let's see how it goes. Comedy Jills. couple of minutes gone fleet we're starting on the front foot it is indeed the diamond for Gillingham like late change on the bench uh, I don't know if Alex Lacey was injured in the warm-up but Eric Simpson replaces him on the bench so obviously a defender for a defender uh, yeah Fleetwood on the ball early on but it's still no nil very early doors <laughs> Gillingham 
Deals her ahead early, it's Brandon Hanlon, it's poor, poor ball from Fleetwood, this short back pass, Eves runs onto it, doesn't get it, but Hanlon does, goes round Cairns and puts him back in the net. Celebrations go, go in before he puts it in, but he does put it in, Gilles the 1-0 up, great start. Fleetwood's still trying to move the ball, but Gilles nearly in again, there's a ball forward, and about three of them, there's Hanlon, Charles Cook and Eves are all there. They don't know who's offside, but Eves isn't, he runs onto it, he takes too long, but he's blocked up by the defender. A couple of corners later, the ball's cleared. But obviously, 40 minutes gone, and we're in the lead. Yeah! 17 minutes in, and what a goal that was. The corner comes in, it comes back out. It comes back out all the way to Zach and gives it to Old Dave on the halfway line. He absolutely pings it across the weeds, beats his man, brings it down, slots it past Ken. No doubt, 2 0 up. What a goal, what a start. Jules are pressing in for a third. There's a lot of pace in behind with Hallen and Charles Cook. Charles Cook gets the ball in again. Uh, Fleet was still trying to move the bell. Jules, ball, Jules defending well. Um, it's a bit of an open game. Looks like it could be a fair few goals in this one. Sun's coming down. Um, obviously, the clock's gone back since the last game. And Dean Parrott's getting up and ready. Because Billy Bingham's just gone off. Um, didn't look good, but he's just come back on. Um, Fleet would have made their first change in the first half. Joey Barton's changed it. Paddy Madden's come on. Um, obviously, he's not happy with since so far. Just trying to change something now. Uh, Paddy Madden, Chad Evans up top, which is a good strike partnership at this level. But uh, Jill still remain firm, 2 0 up. Still looks threatening. Uh, the fleet would look threatening as well. We're heading towards half time, and Jill's firmly in the driver's seat. Jill's down to the defensive work towards the end of the half. Um, Amos pulled up for a foul, which looked like a brilliant tackle. But it's come to nothing. Jill's still 2 0 up, 43 minutes gone. Uh, a rubbish kick from Holy, but uh, hopefully we can get into half time in this lead. <laughs> The sun is being a bit of a problem, but that is our only problem really at the minute as it is half time and we are 2 0 up against Fleetwood. Fleetwood have moved the ball while well, they made an early change. Paddy Madden came on and they went to two up top. Um, they've looked threatening and trying to get in down this left quite a lot. The likes of Ashley Hunter, Chad Evans linking up well. Wallace trying to get forward as well, but the crossing's been poor. Um, they've been resorted really to shooting from distance a couple of times. Holy hasn't really had to make a save. And you know, we're defending well. Um, of course, we'll have a clean sheet at the minute. Touch wood. Don't know where some wood is, but I'll be touching it. Well, next six some. Um, yeah, in terms of us, uh, we played well. We took our chances, took advantage of a poor back pass. You know, I didn't really see it in real time. I just saw Hannah run onto a pass, and it looks like Charles Cook tried to play it through to Eves. Uh, the defender that Eves was running with sort of played it through back to Cairns, but Hannah ran, ran onto it, went around Cairns, put it in the back of the net. And then later on, um, Sky Sports, by the way, need to change their app because they credited Luke O'Neill with the, with the assist, but it wasn't. Uh, Zachary gave it to Old Egg on the half and he absolutely pinged it in. He was brought it down excellently into a lot of space, hit it past Cairns. Um, could have had a couple more. And a couple of chances to pull the ball down in the box, hadn't been able to get it away. A couple of offsides, which isn't great to see, but uh, you know, if it brings a goal, um, you take them. In terms of changes, um, Alex Lacey has dropped out. Um, Eric Simpson now on the bench. I think we're probably going to see Dean Power at some point, especially because Billy Bingham has been knocked down once and we thought he might go off. Uh, didn't look good at the time, but uh, Bingham carried on until the end of the half, so maybe if we have some leeway, we'll see him come off. Maybe we'll see Elliot List come on as well. Hopefully, it could be a comfortable one. If we see it out for 70 minutes, I think it'll be all right. You know, another goal will go. We won't go down. Um, we won't go down a miss, but uh, yeah, I think if we see it out towards 70 minutes, we'll be able to see it out altogether. That's what we'd hope anyway, but Fleetwood do look threatening. It always sucks when they're shooting the other end because you can't really see what's going on. Over here, you feel like you have sort of because you're behind the goal, you feel like you can sort of see what's going on. So, we'll see how it goes, big half coming up. Um, we're all a lot of mean business at the minute. Um, that's now seven goals without reply. Um, so, maybe we'll get a couple more. We'll see how it goes. It is half time, it is Gillingham 2, Fleetwood 0. Second half time's away, Fleetwood are obviously going to press the half. Hopefully, we don't sit back too much. Billy Bingham's had to come off, Conor Ogilvy has come on. Oh, Shields gone to the back three, Fuller's playing left centre back now. Oh, Eves is on side here. He's on! Oh, he's not. But Ogilvy's gone to left wing back, Fuller left centre back. O'Neill right wing back, and then Old Acre Burn and Charles Cook as a midfield three. Still 2 0. Sun's gone down, but Fleetwood are absolutely pammed to Gilligan yeah. half at the minute. Evans, I think it was, just hit the post with a header. Yeah. Came out and fell to Amor. Jill's just sitting back right now. Can't do this the whole half. Yeah. Yeah. We would be absolutely battered. I think we've got our half, the whole half so far. Finally, he holds the ball up so well, gives it to Charles Cook. He holds it as well, gives it to Ogilvy. Finally gets down this left. He puts a pin crack, pinpoint cross in. It comes to Eves, straight on his head, past Alex Cairns. It's 3 0. That should be that. Wow, that is a relief.
Fans, um, Jill's playing on the break now. He's pressing. Charles Hood looks good on the ball as well. Hanlon just can't reach across there. Um, looks like Elias is about to come out. Probably for Hanlon. Charles Hood's got the ball again now. Jill's like threatening every time we get on the ball now. It's beautiful to see. Just playing around nicely. Even Conor Ogilvy is getting involved. <laughs> Go put across him. Edit, edit. What a play! It's over the bar for a hat trick. Looks like Elias is about to come on. Brilliant times, you know. Cleveland made their final change. Yeah, Elias is on. He's got a good 25 minutes trying to do something here. He places Hamlin. He did very well today. Got his goal. Um, it's the usual change these days. Uh, we'll see if Fliss can get involved. 76 minutes gone. Dean Parrott's going straight swap for Charles Cook. He's nearly involved straight away. But well, he is involved straight away. He gets the goal straight away. O'Neill gets the ball. And he plays it over to Dean Parrott. He looked a mile offside, but it wasn't given. He shoots. It's easy for Ken to lack power. Uh, but all three changes made now for both sides. 82 minutes gone. It doesn't look like there's going to be any more goals. And then suddenly out of nowhere, Fleetwood at the bar hose well off his line. They let fly. Start for a goal kick. They let fly. Hull is nowhere near it. It hits the post slash bar um, and goes out. Fleetwood hit it twice. It's not gone their way today. But you know, Jules have been good as well. They deserve their win. Um, 82 minutes gone. 3 0 up. Fleetwood are pushing again late on. Um, looks like they're going for it. Why not? Um, I think Max Aymer deserves a shout out. I criticise him a lot, but he's been excellent today. Um, Madden looks like he's in and Aymer recovers as well to get a tackle in. Fleetwood now put the corner in. Doesn't clear the first man. Fuller clears. I think it's important to get a clean sheet today. He's had a couple of half chances to get his hat through. Late on there, Elliot List breaks well, uses his pace to run into space, and the cross comes in, it's got cut out just before it gets to Eves. Uh, Jill's still going for a fourth. Corner's whipped in, and Mark Byrne heads it just uh, into the goal of his arms. Clean sheet's important now, 89 minutes gone. Uh, should be able to see it out for a 3 0 win. Literally, as I put the camera down, Paddy manages with an absolute sitter, it's squared to him. I think it's mad that it comes to him from a couple of yards out, maybe a bit more. There it goes, miles over. Yeah. Yeah. 3-0 win, excellent start. the video on the ground, I might as well end it in the ground. It's a 3 0 win for Gillingham. Two wins on the, in a row, two clean sheets in a row. You know, 4 0 against Bradford, 3 0 against Fleetwood. Road luck at times, Fleetwood hit both the post and the bar, I think. Um, but they hit the woodwork twice and missed an open goal as well, but that was when the score was 3 0. But it is a win, you know, we did the job early in the first half. Um, Brandon Hallam ran onto a really, really poor back pass. He got way around the keeper, got the goal, and then obviously Tom Eves as well got two goals himself, um, one late on when we are under a lot of pressure to be fair, uh, you know the score was 2-0, we're getting battered at the start of second half, Conor Ogilvy put in a brilliant ball, brilliant set off by Regan Charles Cook, uh, and Tommy's got his head on the end of it, and as well he got the first one as well, which was a brilliant, well he got his first one from a brilliant cross from Darren Oldacre, of course the boy brought it down, finished it past Cairns, but it's a 3-0 win, you know Steve Lovell, fair play to him, um, you know he spoke about getting the players in he wants to play with. You know, I think when he didn't have those players available, he was struggling a bit because we saw him go 4-3-3 three, four, three, three, just the game before Plymouth was playing Wilkinson right wing. Um, and that wasn't too long ago. That was literally the game before the Bradford game. So, we saw him trying with the team where he didn't have the players he wanted. Now he's got them and we're running riot. You'd like to think in summer, he'd go and get a couple more similar sort of players. So, Regan Charles, Luke Hanlon, Parrott. But um, for now, you know, we've got them fit, got them available. Hopefully Bingham's injury isn't too serious. And uh, yeah, we've got two wins on the bounce. We'll move on to the next few games. Obviously, we've still got three home games to go. Only one of them against Blackpool, and then also we've got Oxford. We've also got two cup games. Uh, Hartlepool in the FA Cup and Crawley Town in the uh, Car sorry, Czech Trade Trophy they're already out of. So we'll see how it goes. But for today, it is a 3 0 win, and it's happy days to be a Gillingham fan. If you did enjoy the video, thank you very much for watching. Just a little shout out to Ben Natman, Fleetwood fan, goes to every single game. Um, obviously, made a long journey down here, the result didn't go his way. but Subscribe to his channel, he's our channel partner, one of them. His link will be down in the description. Check out his vlog for this game as well. But a brilliant win. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below, follow all that good stuff in the description. And I'll see you next time. What's a win?
Papa Joe's. Goodbye.